Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 11 of the anime series Erased. And many a time over the course of this series have I been heard to say, especially in relating with the, uh, I guess you could say, arguable Deus Ex Machina that is the revival, timey wimey time travel power, that anything can really happen. And when I say anything can happen, Usually what I'm what I'm trying to say is <laughs> unexpected things are thoroughly possible. And this episode, if for nothing else, completely blew my mind with a whole new direction and a whole new tack that I was literally I, I couldn't have pinpointed in a million years um how this was gonna play out. And I have to say, opening the episode with the sensei's voiceover and finding out that he was brutal to animals, which is something that speaks to a lot of, uh, whenever you hear about these people who are psychotic killers and everything, they sort of get their start torturing animals and things of that sort. And it really was cringeworthy. And of course, uh, you know, in relating this story about these hamsters, he has the one that survives. He names it Spice, I, I guess, sort of as a, uh, you know, because here is the one that somehow survived, somehow kept kicking and isn't that tantalizing and, you know, all these kinds of things. And the genius in the entire OP that follows, Satoru in neither of his, you know, most common age forms is in this thing at all. He's completely wiped out of it. And I was like, I can't believe this of course we have the teacher saying that well i let him survive or you know whatever like that but it looks like he is well and truly dead all through the opening credits and for a few minutes into the episode we're following around his mother going to her day job and her house seems to be empty and all this stuff and like it's just i i even began to suspect could we see the revival power burgeon in her could they flip it on its ear and maybe this is something that is related to both of them and maybe she could go back in time <laughs> and do more and you know i feel like you'd have to dedicate a whole nother series to that probably though for her to catch up with everything as you know omniscient as she seems to be as all aware <laughs> as she seems to be i think she'd probably have to do some leg work like satoto has had to do so i mean to find that he has been in a coma since the teacher's trying to murder him 15 years ago, it's 2003, and at first I was like, oh, we're back in 2006, but no, it's 2003, um, and he's only just now waking up out of this. It's it's quite intriguing to see that he has, in a, in a manner, been here all along. He wasn't actually killed, but he was still taken out. And life moved on without him, very much embodying that, you know, the town where I am missing. He has been away. He hasn't been dead, but he's been away. They managed to sort of have their cake and eat it, too, in that equation. They didn't have to kill him for him to be removed from the scenario, but he was well and truly removed from it. And as I say, life has gone on. And we see the adult Kenya, um, Hiromi, Kayo. Oh, my God. Just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> the emotions of seeing her coming in and I knew it was her as soon as you saw the pant legs I just I was like Kayo come on it's Kayo and she has her child and we find out subsequently it was Hiromi's child <laughs> they got married I'm like go Hiromi okay um, you know, like, just made me chuckle out loud um Kenya you know, I think he said being a lawyer now and uh, Hiromi's a doctor, I think it was. Just seeing them as adults and Kenya really wanting to talk, of course, to Satoru in his convalescence coming out of this. And he's very much, you know, he, he's got certain amnesiatic qualities going on where he doesn't remember a whole lot. He still has vague impressions, as you see when he's trying to recollect his last memories before, or, you know, that the doctor says falling asleep, air quotes. Um, and that to me is interesting because he, he can't quite put his thumb on it, but you get the sense like he knows there's something up. Something is a risk. He, he's double timing his, uh, you know, rehabilitation to get himself walking and moving again. And there's this sense of urgency, like he has this sixth sense, he has this unconscious sense that I need to be ready for something. And he hasn't yet met, of course, Sensei, until after being introduced to this little girl, Kumi, who is, I am assuming she's got bone cancer or something along those lines. 
and she says her sister is going to give her bone marrow, which is supposed to cure her. I'm wondering if this is going to turn out to be like, you know, Idy's sister or something, something that'll call back to one of our other main characters earlier in the series um, to link everything kind of sort of together. Whereas usually I wouldn't be all for that. I would definitely be for that if, if we had sort of a commonality existing between these characters along these lines, where it was Idy's little sister or something along those lines. Um, but of course, through that interaction, do we find how exactly it was that the sensei became a politician and, you know, he'd gotten married, he changed his name. And so I thought it was just kind of in his hospital bed. Oh, why'd you change your name? Of course, we, the viewer, are probably like, oh, gee, that's a little funky, isn't it? He changed his name and everything like that. Um, Knowing his past history, of course, there's more reasoning to it that we're aware of that Satoru isn't. And I'm just, I'm like the sensei to a degree. I'm biding my time, like, you know, on the edge of my seat. When's Satoru going to realize? When's Satoru going to realize? And as soon as the sensei's like, oh, we're going to have some words, you know, we're going to talk. Let's go somewhere more private where for some reason paparazzo are trying to get, you know, Satoru's story, get pictures of him and all this kind of funky stuff. And I was wondering because they're talking about how he's gravitating toward the child. I was wondering if this was going to be like a holdover of child abductions going on in the past or something. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, we don't hear of anything like that happening again in the course of this episode. So it seems like Satoru had, in fact, won the day. He saved the girls' lives. He saved the lives of all the children. And at least for the moment, it seems like the sensei backed off from it. We don't know any of the wiser if he had continued on in that time. Um, but, you know, as soon as he's bringing Satoru to this little sort of back room elevator, and you can see the look on Satoru's face. I'm like, he knows. He's piecing it together. He remembers that last fateful car ride. And I, I just happened to click on the, the timestamp for the episode. I'm like, damn it! <laughs> We're going to end here! Cliffhanger with, of course, that reveal. Sensei, I've got my memories back. <laughs> you know, look on Sensei's face is like, well, damn. <laughs> okay, you know. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm desperate to know what's going to happen. Like, this entire episode completely threw me for a loop. It was completely unexpected, the direction they took with it. I had really begun to suspect, especially, as I say, the genius of the OP, omitting Satoru in either of his age classes that he is predominantly in in this series, omitting him from every sequence, every scene. When you call back on all the suspects, none of them have their faces crossed off and everything like that. Like, just really, like, you know, wearing on the shirt sleeve, the, the show is, that we've already reached the turning point. We know who the killer is. And that overhanging question as we start the episode, even though the sensei sort of begins by saying, well, much like that hamster spice, I let you live, Satoru. For the first few minutes, it's like, where is he if he's alive? Mommy Dearest is going back and forth to work. She's got this empty house and all this stuff. And again, just, you know, tantamount heartstrings for Satoru's mother in her spending every day. I think he said like four hours a day keeping his muscles from atrophying and using, you know, machinery to, to keep them sparse. And, you know, so he could have an easier time of it when he would eventually come out of it. I mean, she she is just an amazing parent <laughs> in the series and um, someone to aspire toward. You know, it, it's rare to see someone so willing to give of themselves, especially for family. I mean, <laughs> you know, it happens, but it seems like more often do you hear of families falling apart and then not taking care of each other, not seeing eye to eye children who loathe their parents or their siblings and all these kinds of things. Um, it's, it's much different for, you know, the parent child dynamic, I'm sure. But it's just, she is an amazing character. And again, all the heartwarming sort of seeing and, and catching up with Kenya and Hiromi, funny how Hiromi and Kayo hooked up and they got a kid and all this kind of stuff. It was heartwarming. But at the end of the day, I was so, like, what is going on? <laughs> you know, waiting for it to finally revolve back around to Sensei and Satoru. And I'm really wondering, like, is this where the final confrontation is going to be? Is he going to kill the Sensei? Is the Sensei going to try to kill him? Will this spark another kind of revival? Will the mother get there in time? And, 
either die trying to save Satoru from the teacher trying to kill him or, you know, what? I don't know. It can Anything can happen <laughs> is what I'm saying. What I've been saying, it's like it took such an unexpected turn. And I really, you know, I have to wonder because I know the manga is several chapters longer than what the series would have been. But we're told that it's going to end in the same exact place and in the same exact way. I am wondering what was condensed, you know, maybe some of this time spent with these characters, you know, around Satoru. Maybe there was more time spent with Kenya and Hiromi and Kayo seeing them grow up. Maybe there was more emphasis on uh, the mother's life and, you know, his absence while he was comatose and all this kind of stuff. I don't really know, but it really has me highly intrigued. I really can't wait to see where in the hell this is going to go in the finale. And uh, it's, you know, it's just an amazing series. It's been an amazing ride. And tense and emotional, satisfying, grating, all of those things you wish for whenever you sit down to watch or read anything. And this has had it all. It's had comical moments. It's had heartbreakingly sad moments. It's had punch-to-the-gut shocking moments. It's had absolute nails-down-a-chalkboard stressful, anxietized moments. And utmost has it been, at least for my part, very good at being unexpected and taking twists and turns you don't necessarily see coming. And uh, for that, I can't champion it enough. It's my favorite of this season. <laughs> Hands down, bar none. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 11 of Erased if you've seen it if uh, you were kind of taken aback as much as I was at how it started and, and thinking you know maybe Satoru had actually died and what was going to happen there if that was the case um, finding out he actually hadn't he was just comatose and, and you know following up with Kenya and Hiromi and Kayo and her little baby and all that kind of stuff seeing her be a mom you know you know she's going to be worlds beyond what her own mother was. And, and, you know, Hiromi, we know that Hiromi is a very sensitive, he was a sensitive young boy, and, and he would be a sensitive parent. I mean, for him to take up, uh, you know, becoming a medical practitioner, I mean, uh, if I have that correct, I forget exactly whether it was Kenya or him. I think they said Kenya was the lawyer. But yeah, I'd love to hear from you what you thought of this episode overall. Love it or hate it, anything goes in the comments below. Just love having that conversation. And otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.